I would like to show you briefly how you can create categories and landing pages in Shopware 6 so your customers can navigate across your shop. Have fun! Hi everybody, it's Alexander from Shop Studio and let's start to create a category in Shopware 6. So basically the goal is to create something like this one. So we have like a menu item here, let's say like clothing and we have to, we want to show some products. Let's say we want to create a new category called sports. To create a new one, of course, you have to go to the shop administration. Then you have to go to catalogs and to categories. And here you can see that there, is, there are two parts to it. So basically we have like the categories. So this is the way how you can create something like this one here. But there's something more to it. We have landing pages too. In the early days of Shopware 6, there was like a feature missing because if you want to create landing pages, let's say for promotion, for special events, maybe for your ads from Google Ads or Facebook, always had to create categories. But this was a bit weird from the, from the structure and that's why they've created a new part. But basically landing pages are technically still categories with fewer features, but I think it's good because they are more clear. You know that this, this is a landing page and not a category for selling your products. Here you can open the category tree and this is the root category. This is the main entry point of the navigation. And here you can see we have food, we have clothing, free time and electronics. But if you look here, you can only see clothing and free time and electronics. And home, this is just a default link, which you can disable, disable via some plugins in the store. And food is missing. And this is because it's not active. You can see the dot is not green. And here the checkbox is not enabled. All right, to create a new category, we go to the root one in this case, and we create a new subcategory. We call it sports, we save it, and now we have to set it active. We have to assign the category type. We have either page list, we have structuring element, and we have link. Page list is basically the default one, like this one, where you just want to show some products. We have like structuring element, entry point. This is typical, for example, for this root element here, catalogs, because we don't want to show it. So technically you have to mark it as structure and element entry point. And we have a link here. This could be, for example, beneficial if you want to add like an external link, for example, to a blog or to a documentation. And if you click on this link, you know, just get redirected to the page. In our case, it's a default one, it's page list. So we scroll down, we can set this one as an entry point, like the root category, but it's not necessary in our case. We don't want to hide it in the navigation, but if you want, you can do it, of course. You can add display images, descriptions, and more. But for now, we just have to save it. You can see that we have now sports here. And we click on sports. Maybe we expect there's something in it, but we can see no products found. So we have created only an empty category. And now the other important part is, of course, a product assignment. We can assign products to it if we want. And there are two ways, either via the product tab. So we can, for example, have like a menu selection. We can search for products. Um, let's say we want to add main product. We want to add main product with properties. We click away. Now the, uh, the part gets refreshed. Now we click on save again. And here you can see we have two products. There's a different way to add products to categories. And it's easy too. You can go to the products, for example, during creation or modification. And for example, let's take the main product with advanced prices. And if you scroll down to visibility and structure, you can assign the set channels, but here you can assign categories in text too. And for example, we could uh, select our new category called sports. You can see we have a new, um, new item here. We click on save, refresh this page we have now main product with advanced prices. And this is basically how you can create categories. And here on top, of course, you can filter it. Um, this filter is built automatically via the properties, which are available to the product. For example, there are some 
products which have a size property like here, main product properties, and that's why you can filter for the size. For example, if we select XL, it's get filtered, but we can of course reset it. And if we select M, um, it's possible to, I would guess because this is a product with variant, like here. One more important thing, we go back to the categories and we open it, go to sports, even two more important things, for example, the layout. It's possible that you have like a different layout for the categories. For example, you can have like a banner here, maybe with text, we can add it too. So let's create like a new one. Um, this is the default category layout. To create a new one, we have to go to shopping experiences. And let's say we create a new layout. This could be like a landing page, listing page in our case. For example, a full width one. This is the name of the layout. And here we can see that we have like a, like a small page builder, like Elementor, for example, in WordPress. We can add new elements to it. Um, let's say we have less plus here and we want to add text and images. So this is the category and we want to have two columns, box, image and text. So we add it here. Ah, now we go. And here we can modify the content. For example, we can upload an image. Let's say we open the media. We want to upload this building here. And now the text can be lorem imsum at the moment. It's not that important. Hopefully this will work. Okay, no error. So everything is valid. And if we go back to the categories, to sports, we now go to the layout and we can change the layout here. And now we select our sports layout, save it. And if we want, we can like change um, images and text only for this specific category. For example, this can be very useful if we have maybe like 10 different categories, which all have the same layout, but of course you want to show different images and text. So you don't have to create 10 layouts. You only have to create one layout and change the text and images here. We save it and we see we have a image on the left side and the text on the right side. And basically you can add everything. You can add um, new elements to the bottom. You can add videos. Um, the shop where shopping experiences are very flexible in this uh, particular case. And the last thing for the categories at least, we have of course the SEO uh, tab two. And of course you can add meta titles. You can just add and change descriptions. For example, for Google, for, for the Microsoft Bing, um, search engine, you can change keyword. And this is of course nice, but there are many shop platforms which have this feature. But what is really cool that you, for example, can change the URLs. Here we have sports. If we assign a set channel, or at least select one, I mean, you can, for example, say that um, you want to change it maybe to extreme sports in lower case. So we click on save, you will see it's still is working just because some internal structure, but this is now the main URL. So basically the old URL is still available, but it's pointing to this new one. So here we go. We have now extreme sports. And for example, if we navigate to clothing, and now we navigate back to sports, you can see it's extreme sports. So this is the new main URL, the new main COOL. And this is the old one which is still available, but like I said, it's not really visible for the search engines now. And this is how you can create categories and assign product to it. One more thing, we have here now the landing pages. And for example, if you want to add special landing pages for let's say Google Ads, you can add a landing page here. Let's say it's like, I don't know, Google Ads promo. We activate it, we assign a sales channel to it storefront in our case and here for example you can create an SEO URL too and you see this is required so let's name it just Google Ads promo we now click on save so we just replace the URL here and here you can see something is not working the page is not found even if you add in slash this is because 
you have to assign a layout. This is a very important step. So basically you can create a new layout. Um, let's say this is a landing page layout, full width. Um, we name it the same, Google Ads promo. We create a layout. And now we can add um, CMS elements to it. Let's say we have like a big image here. Then we have like a small text. We change the image again. So we go to the settings of this element. We open the media. We select the building again. Done and save it. Now the layout is still missing. So you can assign a layout here. Select the Google Ads promo layout. Save it. And now if you go back to the landing pages, we can see our landing page. So this is the way how you can create landing pages in Shopify 6. So I think it's very easy and the CMS builder, the shopping experiences are very flexible. So you can add basically every element you can imagine. That's basically everything. Hopefully you have enjoyed this small tutorial. Do not forget to subscribe my channel to get notified for new videos which will come in the future. And I see you in the next one. Bye.